What's up everybody, Sidra here with another War of the Visions video, and today I'm going to be going over the uh, the unit that almost got it all started for me on my main account, um, Yerma. So she was the first unit that I pulled for outside of sort of your initial, you know, banner pulls when we started, so I've had her since the first day, and she has kept me competitive in all modes since then. Uh, first off, I absolutely love um, the artwork. I think that the idea of the character is cool, like a female viking with a big axe, um, it's kind of awesome. And, you know, so I was drawn into it from that. I mean, being a Final Fantasy fan, you know, it's, you know, we don't know the characters in this game, so didn't really know her at a time. And she actually came out before she even came out in the story, but I just saw the design and I'm like, all right, that's a unit I got to play. Uh, didn't really know much about her. Um, but I got to say, she is an extremely powerful unit who is probably criminally under pulled as well. I said the same thing about Miranda in my last video, but given how absolutely devastating this chick is, I'm surprised we don't see more of her. Um, she does a lot of damage and, and, and she's beefy. Um, so, you know, these are her sort of uh, naked stats, right? These are, there's, oh, I, got, I got all the fav favorite equipment off here. Um, in general, you're going to be running her about 38 to 4100 hit points uh, with nice defense, a lot of damage. So, you know, what, what makes her good? So, there's a couple of things. Uh, first, this is the biggest thing probably about her. Uh, let's go here. I'm going to use the WOTV calc to kind of show you. But, it's this right here. Launch. Launch on her sub-job, uh, Viking. Uh, which is pretty much what you're going to play her 90% of the time. Maybe 95. You'll, you might want to swap to Thief sub for raids. But, in essence, you're going to play her Viking sub. And you're playing her Viking sub for launch. So, a couple of things about this skill. A, really nice potency at 165 while only costing 16 AP. Five casts of it, which is really nice. And it's range 3 with a range height of 2. It is extremely usable. Um, you know, it's, and then, you know, the other thing about it, which it doesn't say here, is one of the best things about it, is it has a higher likelihood to crit. Um, I do use a crit axe on her. And I don't know the actual percentages, but I've played her since the beginning. And, I mean, she crits when she launches 95% of the time. Maybe a little bit more. I mean, it's rare to see it not crit. And when she's using her other skills, it's probably closer to 50% crit. So, I mean, she crits a lot. And if you go back here to the character screen, if you notice, her master ability is increased critical damage of 15. So, there's amazing synergy here between her master ability um, you know, and, and, and launch. Launch is the best low AP attack in the game. So if you look at all of the characters and kind of how much damage their their lower AP attack that the AIs are, are generally using, um, it is extremely strong. So first and foremost, um, that is the reason to play her, um, simply for launch. Um, but secondly, she's beefy. So she, like I said, you're going to run her about 38 to 4100 hit points in game. Um, but she also has 6 defense from her board, and an active ability that gives you 10 that she puts high priority on. So, you know, she's at 16 defense before, you know, any armor, any vision cards, any espers. Um, and, you know, we'll go over some builds, but you're generally run, she's generally in-game at 30 to 50 defense. Um, she's got some innate missile resist, so you got 10% missile resist uh, on her naturally. So, in essence, she is doing a hell of a lot more damage than she's taking um, whenever she's in a physical situation. Um, so, you, you know, you got launch, um, just devastating, like I said, you've got her defenses. And then I, I think the third strength from her is she's got Thief Subjob. And I think Thief Subjob does a couple of things for any unit. One, it gives them Thief Lore, right? So you're not dealing with a slow unit. She's like mid-range speed-wise, and she's got move four with it on. Um, so despite being, you know, a lot of time you, you think that a unit that beefy is going to be slow and not be able to move. Um, not the case with her. Um, but then the other thing it does, it gives you raid utility with steal time. Uh, I know she, I, I was one-shotting with some Lucias and randoms, the, you know, the one win raid that she did. You know, I would basically steal time, pop a LB to lower the you know, resistance at some point. Uh, you know, if the timing wasn't good, maybe hit a, you know, a max damage uh, launch. Or, I'll, I'm sorry, actually it was sneak attack in the raid because didn't use Viking sub for that, but yeah. So you get some raid utility aside from the sort of the bruiser that you get. I, I, I mean, and I really do think that she's the bruiser of all bruisers uh, right now in the game. I know a lot of people think Sid 
Um, intelligent minds can disagree, but I, I'm a big, bigger fan of, of Yerma. So let's talk about some builds for her, right? How, how would you run her? So we're gonna go. Go here to my Yerma one. So I'll put this. This is the Alpha Yerma build, right? So th this is probably like the strongest you could possibly get her, um, you know, and got obviously the Golden Axe. Um, this is a plus five. You know, I had a plus two for a long time, and then I was able to get a plus five at the, at the second um, go around. Like I said, I run it at crit, so you could do an assault and have a little more attack. I will say, since I do occasionally not crit, like it's like I said, it's 95, maybe a little bit higher, but it's not 100. So I think I am getting value out of that crit. Um, if I never saw a, a you know a non crit, um, I'd probably think it was being wasted. Um, but I but I don't believe that to be the case. This gives you the big slash attack up. Um, so that's going to be your axe. If you don't have a plus five, you can rock a plus two. You'll do just fine. Um, the armor, platinum robe, is her armor. You get the nice amount of hit points, some missile resist, 18 defense, really helps cement her as a bruiser. And obviously, if she can get bells, you're going to put them on her. If you notice here, like in this pretend comp I made here, this is like double bruiser healer. Um, so she gets the bells. But I will say, she doesn't need them as much as some other DPS units do. So if, if you are running her with like Venera or maybe like Catone, uh, both of the units I have, um, I would put the bells on them and actually give her uh, the just something else, anything else with an ability on it, because she can actually use her Rebellious Spirit buff and go into two launches, because um, so she's using a low AP attack as her best attack. So if it's just her and you got the bells, put them on there, but don't worry about her without bells. She can still perform really well without them. Um, obviously Odin with the Maneater uh, all of, and a little bit resistances, and then I love making her beefy and just having her tough to take down, especially with the healer in the party. So I got Leona's Castle here. And then notice, kind of on the other party members, I've got Odin, so 20% damage down, uh, and then slash attack up here from Path to Revenge. If maybe you've got a tank in here, so you need a vow, and you've only got one spot, you can certainly move the Path of Revenge here, which is, you know, defend, 10 defense and 20 slash, over onto Yerma and use that instead. That works too. So this is like Alpha Yerma right here. Like, you do not want to face this. Um, she is going to hit you damn hard. Even units that are, she hits so hard, uh, that even units who, you know, have some slash resist, she can tend to punch through them. Um, so that's one build, but let's, let's look at another one here, because one of the great things about her is there's so many ways that you can run her, even though she has a relatively simple kit. So here's another build I'm a fan of. Maybe you need some anti-evasion, and, and, you, know, and you, don't, you don't have the gunners. Um, the active ability from, this is her uh, TMR, Blood Boil, it gives a whole bunch of accuracy, uh, you know, and attack up for three turns. So you get an extra buff to get her some AP. You get three turns. She will use it after Rebellious Spirit, by the way. Um, you got a, an Alex ring on her for some uh, you know, some more accuracy. This is an accuracy Alex ring. And, you know, since you're losing a little bit of defense compared with the other armor, um, well, you're not losing many hit points. The nice thing about her TMR does have still a bunch of hit points on it. Um, but you get the five elemental resist to kind of help balance it out. And if you don't have Odin, or if somebody else is using, using Odin, uh, Two-Headed Dragon is a great S for Bonner. So A, it's got the extra um, accuracy nodes, right? So between the active ability, the Alex ring, more Alex nodes, and accuracy on, um, you know, as her master ability. Uh, this is, she, she, she ain't missing much, even when we talk about some of these high evasion units. Um, there's a lot here. But the other thing about uh, Two-Headed Dragon is, you know, aside from the uh, normal, the slash attack nodes it has, and has extra attack nodes as well, um, it also has two nodes of extra crit damage, which basically makes it almost as strong as uh, Odin for her in terms of impacting damage, um, especially because of how, you know, all the crits that she's doing. So this is a really nice build here um, in terms of making her anti-evasion, uh, but even if you weren't facing an evasion unit, there's enough here that this is still a good unit all around. You know, and then another one, uh, so let's say maybe you don't have some of that stuff. There's another way to do this. Um, so notice in this case, I've got um, right, Iron Giant on her. Uh, that's 15% slash resist, right? But depending on what you were fighting, so this is good, like manual B PvP, generic, you think you might face a Cid. Um, you, know, you can do it that way. If it's like maybe Arena and you're targeting uh, evasion comps, you can just swap in Esper or, uh, Ifrit right there. 
Um, this gives her another ability uh, with the TMR to help keep her back, build some AP if she's not rushing right away. Um, this is probably her second best armor, which is the shield smart coat. And then, you know, we've got Odin right here, but again, you can you can use any of those other ones that we've talked about. Um, I think I have resonance for like six hundred thousand resonance for like six uh six espers on her. I mean she can really be customized to kind of do what it is that you need it to do. Um, you know, in terms of her weaknesses, there's definitely two. I mean she's weak to magic, so magic or or, or hurt her pretty hard. And then uh, the other one is that all of her damage is slash damage. So, uh, you know, she doesn't have any damage versatility. Uh, you know, you wouldn't run, run her up against a slash whisper. Um, but you don't have to be afraid of a little bit of slash resistance. It's really just the full-on slash resistance that you have to be worried about. Because she hits hard enough that she can generally um, punch through. You know, when you know we're looking at her skills, the nice thing about her as well, she's got multiple AoEs in different sort of configurations of where the enemies can be. So I think it might actually be easier to show it on here. So, and again, the AI, if it can hit multiple opponents, it usually will. So, you know, having a couple different possible configurations where you can hit more than one enemy is, is pretty nifty um, to have on a unit. So if you look here. Right, so Knee Breaker's got them in a line. Killing Axe can hit both sides if you're in front of them. Um, Drain Cyclone is a heal ability and it hits kind of around her. I was able to solo uh, the, uh, I think it was the Iron Giant um, Brutal Quest um, with her. I uh, used that for a couple uh, couple heals. Um, be careful with full body blow. I actually have this turned off despite being so funny when it hits. I mean, it hits hard. I remember once I hit a Sid for like 5,500 damage, but it has a cast time on it. It takes 37 AP. In general, I would rather just kind of turn that one off. I don't like the risk of having the cast time. And really, I want her using launch more than anything. Um, I have all of the other abilities on, um, but I have thought of kind of turning off Killing Axe. Only because it, tw it costs twice as much AP as launch, and the AI doesn't calculate the fact that launch will crit into it. Um, so if it's going to hit two enemies, I'd rather actually use Killing Axe, but sometimes if she can get into melee range, she'll use Killing Axe instead of launch. And that always bothers me a little bit, if she can get into range one. So you can kind of play with that. But the only one really that you need to turn off is, you know, this full body blow, uh, unless you want to laugh and uh, get lucky with it uh, hitting. You know, and then in terms of the Thief Tree, You've got sneak attack, so she still has an attack. It's pretty nice when she uses launch. It's, it's pretty pretty hard hitting, you know. And she's got steal time for your raids, so works just fine. LB is pretty nice, although I also have it turned off only because again I don't want her. If I'm manually doing it in a raid, so be it. But in the other modes, I don't want her blowing 43 AP. I would rather see two launches. Um, but it does do some single target resist um, on the enemy, so. You know, that's kind of my review on Yerma. Extremely strong unit. I, I, I don't know why we don't see more of her. Um, the amount of damage that she, you know, can do. Uh, like I said, I think Launch is the best low AP damage unit or damage skill in the game. Um, and, I mean, when you're talking about running in fight between, like, 30 to, to 50 defense, um, bringing that kind of damage, you know, with some decent movement and mobility, um, you just have an all-around good unit. So, hope you enjoyed the video. That is uh, my second uh, video in the Sidra's Unloved series. So, hope you learned something about Yerma. Thanks, and have a good one.